Nginx unit is um, our production um, application server. It's fully dynamic, which means that you can change and make, make changes to your application um, running just curl commands with a RESTful API. Um, you never need to restart. You never need to reload. It's pretty cool. So what we're going to be doing today is showing how you can do this with a production application running and adding a new production application. So currently, the way we're starting today is we're going to have an um, application running on unit in PHP, which is WordPress. I chose WordPress because it's pretty popular. Um, and we're going to be serving the static files through um, Nginx. By the end of the demo today, we're going to be adding Django. And we're going to have both Python and PHP running on the same unit server while serving the static files with Nginx. So to start today, our current environment, we're running Ubuntu 16.04. We have Nginx Plus installed. And we've installed Plus specifically for visualization. Um, everything we'll be doing today um, will be available in open source. But I did want to be able to show it to you in a GUI form. Nginx unit is also pre-installed because we are running WordPress. And I've got all the language modules pre-installed today. We have PHP 7, which is running WordPress. Another neat feature about unit is you can run multiple versions of languages. So I could be running PHP 5 and PHP 7. Um, I have Python 3 pre-installed. And I have Django installed, but not configured, which is what we're going to do today. So let's get to the demo. So down below here, we see our WordPress application. It's running in production. It's running well. Make note over here, you can see this little box. It's green. It will stay green, I promise, through the entire, through the entire demo. <laughs> That's the goal. We can see our upstreams here. Um, now, one thing to note here, this is one application. Well, technically two, but it is WordPress. Um, <laughs> Since we currently don't have routing um, inside unit available, um, we have to configure two apps for WordPress to function on unit. Um, un WordPress uses two URI schemes, um, a user pages, which are also called pretty URLs. And those we're using the script option, which is right here. And then for the admin um, URLs, they need to be directed to relevant PHP files. Um, and we use the index option. So that's why we're seeing two. So I'm going to go ahead and begin. We're going to go ahead and add in our Django application and get it configured. Um, one more thing to note is right over here, we see the different processes running for these two applications. Um, and we're going to see those things change as we add in our Django application. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change into the directory where I'd like to keep my application. And I'm going to use the Django admin command to start a project. And for today's demo, we'll call it DJ app. I'm going to change into our project directory. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is migrate a database. Um, Django, by default, uses SQLite. Um, but of course, you can use whatever or whatever database you'd like to use for production. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Another thing to note here is the manage.py script. Um, it does the same thing as the Django admin command. However, it's specific to the project and points to the settings file for the project. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and go to our settings. And we're going to need to do add in a couple of things. Um, the first thing we're going to add in is our allowed hosts. So we'll scroll down and find the section with allowed hosts. And for this, I'm going to put in my IP address for my machine because I'm running on localhost. However, in production, you'll use something like a domain name or a host name. The next thing I need to do in this file, one more thing, is I need to go down to the end and go and add in a static root folder 
Um, this is where I'm going to collect all of the static um, files within the Django project and store them so that we can point Nginx to them. Otherwise, um, by default, Django is serving the um, static content, and we, we don't want that. Um, it does run a little bit slower, so we'd rather have Nginx running our static content. And we're going to store it in the same directory and call it static. And everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And then we're going to go back to where our manage.py script is running. And we're going to go ahead and run the command collect static, which is going to, again, take all of those static files from the Django project, collect them together, and put them into our new static folder. We can see 119 were copied. And now we can go ahead and set up Nginx. So I'm going to navigate to our conf.d directory. Um, this is where we store configurations additional to Nginx's main configuration. And what I, the reason I like to do this is because I'll have a configuration for each application. So in, in this folder, I have a wordpress.conf, I have a django.conf, and I have a status.conf. And the status.conf is for my dashboard down here. So I've already made the file um, to save time here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show that to you and just go over it a little bit here. So this is a pretty standard Nginx configuration. This one is specific to Django for our Django application. So at the top, we get to see our upstream server, which is um, a proxy pass to our Django unit backend. We have our root directory, which points to the static um, location where we collected all of our files. Um, I also have a couple of other things in here to show as well. I've got my cache set up, and we have health checks. So with caching, um, one of the features of Nginx Plus is the ability to cache purge, where we don't have that in open source. Um, and another feature would be the health checks. So those are the two things that are not um, open source here. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and move that file into production by renaming it. And I'm going to check that to make sure that it looks good by running nginx-t. It says that the syntax is good and the test is successful, so now we can go ahead and reload. Um, as soon as I reload, we will see it pop up here. Or we should see it pop up here. And keep in mind that those two are still green. So we're going to do a reload. And there we go. We have our um, Django application being served the static file portion. But we notice here one thing. We're still failing our health checks. And that's because we don't have a backend set up. So the next thing we'll need to do is set up our Django um, application. So the first thing I'm going to do, just to kind of highlight some of Unit's features, which is pretty cool, um, is that we have a curl command. And this is going to show Unit configuration. One thing you might note here is that we are using sudo. Um, sudo is necessary to run this command because we are running a Unix socket, and it requires either root privileges and read-write read write privileges. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, and we're going to take a look at what the current configuration is. And this is for our WordPress application. So we have our listeners up here. We have our applications and our parameters down here. I'll get into a little bit more of what this means um, once we've set up Django, but just keep this in mind. Um, and we'll, we'll go over it in a minute. So next, I'm going to go ahead and set up unit. Um, we're going to put in our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to our unit folder. And I'm just going to show you I've already made a configuration file for this, which is a simple JSON file. And you'll see a few things here. We have our Python application. We have our processes. I'm going to start with five. We'll hard code it with five, really. Um, we have our module, which is our DJ app, and the location of where that application, where it is located. So I'm going to quickly run a command. And we're going to go ahead and put this in to unit. So a few things in what's happening here in this command. Again, we're running sudo, because we do need those rewrite privileges. 
And we're having, we're gonna call it DJ app here as well, just for naming consistency. And we're gonna put it inside of the applications object inside of the unit config. We're using the unit socket to do this. And we have our Django configuration file location here, which is this file that we saw earlier. We're gonna use the data here. We're gonna put the data using data binary and a put method to do this. So I hit enter, successful reconfiguration done, and we see our five processes are shown up over here in our process list. It's pretty cool, right? Pretty easy. But there's one thing we notice here, we're still failing. Does anyone know why we're still having failed health checks? Anybody? All right, I'll tell you. Um, we haven't set up a listener, so we have no access to the application. So that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna run a different command, and this command's gonna look slightly different than the previous one. And the big reason is because we're putting data directly in rather than having it be in a file that we're putting in. So you see here we have our listeners, um, I'm gonna put 8,000, and we're putting it directly into the application called, or applying it directly to the application called DJ app using again the put method. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and we should see, should see this pass down at the bottom. It'll just take a moment and there it is. We've passed, unit is up and running, Django is up and running. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and run that command to um, show the unit configuration. And up here we see, we have our listeners and we have our DJ app now, and we have our application DJ app with that same information that we put from that file. And there's a few fun things to show about this. I'll scroll down so you can see a bit better. So in the listener section up here, you have hard-coded IP addresses, which is an option, you can do this, or you can have it to listen with a wildcard on all um, IP addresses. Another thing down here is in the parameters, you'll see processes. You have the ability to um, have a maximum amount of processes and a minimum. So in this case, I started with five, and it can go up to 20 depending on the traffic. Down here, I started with zero, and it can go up to five depending on the traffic. A reason you might wanna do this is because in WordPress's case, since all the user URLs are coming through here, it's probably gonna be a lot more traffic than our admin panel so we don't need quite as many processes running. And then down in the, the DJ app here, we have hard-coded five processes, so it's not going to change. Um, the other thing to mention as well, some of the um, optional parameters here, you'll see user and group. Those are in, we've put them in the WordPress, but we didn't put them in the Django app. Every language does have its own set amount of parameters that are necessary for the language but um, there are the ones that you can change. So I'm just gonna go over here and show you we have our WordPress application running. Um, I kept it at just the basics, but this is running side by side. And we have our Django app here. It's successfully installed and running. And I know it's a bit short and sweet, but that's what I have for you today, so. Thank you. Does anyone have questions? <laughs> yep. Any plans to support asynchronous applications in Python? Um, I will leave that question up to you. I have Nick and Valentin in the room, and they um, have been working extensively on Unit. Nick is our project manager. He can answer that one. Single based. Sorry, sorry, I was just getting the microphone. Didn't hear the question correctly, so let me bring the microphone back to you. Uh, any, any plans to support asynco-based um, web applications like AIO, HTTP, or something like that in Python? A little more than just WSGI apps. Well, for now, it's just, w, uh, now it's just WSGI, but uh, in the future, we are going to improve the interface and uh, uh, add more 
capabilities to into Python module. Currently, it only supports uh, WSGI. Yeah, that, that was Valentin, the team lead for the unit development. Other questions? Any other questions about unit in general? About how to reconfigure? It's too easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, well, we will have uh, another session on unit tomorrow in the deep dive where we, where we will go through uh, the newest features, uh, including the Node.js and uh, TLS uh, configuration, as, um, and also unit will be presented at the keynote in the morning. But it looks like uh, we gave you a few extra minutes to, um, uh, to go to your rooms and uh, get uh, changed for the welcome reception or whatever we have here in the... Uh, I believe it's a happy hour. Happy hour. So that's yeah. exciting. <laughs> that sounds good. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>